Good evening, Illinois. My name is Rima Kamran, and welcome to Muslims Collaborify. I am the Executive Director of the Illinois Muslim Civic Coalition, and I'm so excited to be joined by my guest, Walid Sankari, who serves as the Illinois Muslim Civic Coalition Census Coordinator. And today we have an exciting show for you. We are going to talk all about the census. This is the second show in a series of three, where we're going over some basic information about the census and getting folks ready to think about the census, which is coming up in April of 2020. Welcome to Muslims Collaborify. You're watching us on Can TV 21. We're streaming online at www.cantv backslash hotline.org. The next 25 minutes, we're going to be talking all about the census. So, the state of Illinois has one of the largest populations of Muslims, about 500,000. We're a diverse, vibrant, and complex community. And the census, which is every 10 years, is coming up in 2020. So, Walid, what is the census and why should we care? Assalamualaikum, so, Rima. It's uh, good to be in front of the camera for a change. Yeah, um, Walid is our awesome uh, back of the house person who's making sure that we are staying on track, and we're excited to have him in front of the camera. So, what is the census, and why should we care? Well, I mean, if you look around, everything, kind of that we, the phones you use, the way we drive, everything is increasingly data driven. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, as a society, not only in America but everywhere, and the census. Uh, is essentially the bedrock of all data-driven decisions, right? So the census is once every decade. The government attempts to count everybody in the country and find out about them, where they live, how old are they, um, where are people moving to, how, what kind of homes are they living in. Okay. And, yeah, so 2020, we're about to hit another zero, so the census will be going out again, and it will be time to collect some data. Awesome. So... And why should we care about the census? We have this awesome graphic here. Why should we care about the census? So we've talked about what is the census. Every 10 years, it's a um, requirement. It's a requirement of the US Constitution that every person has to be counted, as Walid was mentioning. It's data that is collected by the government to make many, many decisions. But why should we care as a community or as an individual who's living in the United States? Um, I suppose in, in the short, answer would be because government decisions affect our lives, right, one way or another. Most immediately would be uh, funding. Uh, federal funding is, is allocated on, the base, on a per capita basis to each state, uh, county, city level. Um, and that, uh, we're talking for a state like Illinois, this is maybe $700 billion, uh, give or take how many people are answering, right? So they estimate uh, about uh, $1,500 per person per year for every person who responds to the census. Or in other words, for every person who doesn't respond to the census, that's $1,500 per person per year that's coming out of uh, schools, coming out of libraries, coming out of uh, fire departments, um, coming out of federal block grants that you know can go to fix roads or potholes. Um, things from day-to-day -day, uh, elements of our lives to even you know bigger policy decisions are gonna be, that's the numbers that they have to go on. That's so, Every person who doesn't respond to the census, that's money that even though your community is owed it because you live there, it's not going to get there because there's no record of you being there. Right. And it sounds like there is a lot of um, monies to be lost. So about $15,000 of loss if a person is not... Yeah, uh, counted, between, between, uh, between this the census 10 years. and the next one, yeah. yeah. So we were talking about what is the census uh, used for. So as you can see on your screen, the allocation of $800 billion of federal funding, and this would be basically, as Walid was mentioning, in everything from hospitals, schools, and highways. So the more people that are counted in, in our community, the more funding we receive. I think the other point that we were also talking about is census is civic power. We keep hearing that phrase. And the reason is because we want to make sure folks know that census is important to our democracy because census results determine political representation. The government, as Walid was mentioning, uses the census data for many, many decisions, including how many states, uh, how many seats each state will get in the House of Representatives and in Congress, and how districts are drawn from state and local government. 
mind. A great case study in this is from 2010. If you guys look on your screen, um, before 2010, the Chicago Chinese American community was divided into four legislative districts. Because in 2010, they rallied and advocates focused on a complete and accurate count of the population. And as a result, 90% of the area's Chinese American population was put into one district as uh, the boundaries were redrawn. And that's where we got uh, our amazing state rep, Teresa Ma, a Democrat from Chicago. She became the first Asian American legislator in the history of the Illinois General Assembly. So in 2016, the community elected their own. And Teresa Ma, as I mentioned, was elected because of the district boundaries that were redrawn in 2011 based on the 2010 census. So here we have a great great example of how the census information and data can actually affect political representation and who actually represents you um, in Congress as well as the General Assembly. Yeah, I mean, these are kinds of long-term ramifications, right, that, that people wouldn't necessarily think of first when they think of why would the government need to count everyone. Yeah, um, I think we just, uh, we're, always, we're, we're always thinking very short term, but in 10 years, a lot of things can change. And the fact that the data that we're going to collect now is going to affect us and the next generation. I don't remember the last census, do you? No, I, I, not too well. Not um, too well? Do you yeah. remember anything about the census? Do you remember your parents talking about it? I remember... Um, out migration, right, was okay. kind of something people were talking about at the beginning, uh, and that why it was important to to bump those numbers up, mm. um, and that conversation has only gotten louder and louder. Um, and what is out migration? Then. So, uh, for those of you who are you know in our home state of Illinois, you might know that uh, people are leaving. Generally speaking, according to the numbers, people are move more people are moving out of Illinois than are moving into Illinois, or even in another way, people are moving to other states that are not Illinois. Mm. Um, so where one point, you know, Illinois was had a much larger percent of the population, uh, that's going down in relative and in real terms. I see. So that obviously means that we're getting less resources because less folks are getting counted in yeah. Illinois. And I think that we, Illinois has lost one seat um, in terms of uh, every census. And this year, if we don't get counted properly, we have the risk of losing two. So we talked about why the census is important and what it affects, not just political representation, but the resources we get as a community. Let's talk about the how and the when. So um, I think that the more, the focus that right now is we're just talking about the census, but I think we have to talk about what happens when you actually get the census. So in March 2020, the Census Bureau will mail information out to households, inviting them to respond to the census. And there are three ways that you can participate. You can participate online. You'll receive a letter inviting to respond online. Each letter or postcard will have a unique household ID as well as the web address. And the internet self-response form is available in 12 non-English languages, um, including Korean, Japanese, Vietnamese, and Chinese. You can also respond on the phone, uh, which is just having um, a, a phone call to, um, to a, a center that can support you, and that support is offered in English and 12 non-English languages. And the assistance phone line is there to ask questions, and you can respond to each of the questions via phone. And finally, you can respond with a paper form. About one in five um, households will receive a paper form in the first mailing, um, and the paper form is only available in English and Spanish. So there's a lot of opportunities and different ways that you can uh, respond to the census. And this is the first time in the history of the census that you have these two other options, which is online and phone. Previously, there was only paper that you could respond by. But let's talk about what are the questions on the census. So let's demystify the census questions. Like, is it going to take a long time? How many questions are there? What are they even asking us? And why, is, why does it matter um, that we respond to these questions? So the census generally asks the most elementary questions you could ask in order to categorize a person. Okay. Um, right? So first question, obviously, is 
how many people. So each address is going to get, you know, sent uh, uh, one postcard or some of them will receive the full length um, form and some of them will receive the American Community Survey. Um, but the first question is obviously how many people mm -hmm. are, are in this are at the address at, at the address yeah okay. um including and then the next question would be are these people living here all the time or some of the time okay and you know why basic questions yeah uh the third question would be what kind of home is this you know is this an apartment unit is it a condo is it a house is it a mobile home um is it owned or rented or okay. you know what is the nature of the the people living in that house um, and then some basic questions, telephone number, um, since they already have your address, um, and then full name, uh, sex, age, uh, race, and that's it. Right, so that's nine, that's nine questions. questions. Um, and you can see on the screen, um, this is a sample um, from the Census Bureau about the specific questions. So like Walid mentioned, very simple, very quick uh, questions that should take no more than 10 minutes to fill out. They are specifics about um, a person's race and origins. Uh, so that's the most specific question, but then you'd have to fill this out for each of the different uh, people that are uh, living in your home. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's ironic. I mean, in that these are probably the most boring basic questions right, you could ask. And these are questions that, I mean, you get annoyed when, you know, Google would ask you for it or Apple right. or you have to like reset an email password, right? Right. But it wasn't until um, the idea of putting a 10th question on there came up that all of a sudden everybody was interested in mm. why these questions. But um, in case you haven't heard or you haven't kept up with the news, there is no citizenship question on the census this year. Um, it is just these nine questions, uh, and that will not be asked. That, and that's important to note. So there is no specific question uh, that there were several, several um, conversations about about the actual citizenship or your status. Um, so thankfully that question's not on, so you don't have to stress about that one. So the nine questions should take no more than 10 minutes. So we complete the census. But what about, um, what about security? So we have a lot of conversations going on about, I don't want to give this information to someone. So I want to point out that the census is confidential. Title 13 provides confidentiality protections, uh, basically safeguards against the disclosure as well as the misuse of census data. So we should know that the census data can only be used for statistical purposes. Personal information cannot be used against res uh, respondents in court or by a government agency. So that's really important to know. And I thought it was interesting that um, census information cannot be disclosed for 72 years. That sounds... Right. Yeah, isn't that like, crazy? Yeah. And you can actually get a um, sworn staff are subject to about $250,000 um, in census fines if, um, if they violate, uh, violate that information. Yeah, it's interesting. So, I was speaking to someone um, at St. Luke's Church about you know, a couple weeks ago, and he was telling me, uh, we were talking about the census, as one does, and he was telling me that uh, he's been using census data to track his ancestry, but he's only been able to go as far as, I think, 1940 Okay, uh, was the last one that the records were put out. Um, and then I guess he was waiting to see how things changed from 40 to 50. Um, so they really do seal them uh, for, for 70 years um, prior to them being made available for, I guess, historians or archivists or okay. data nerds or whoever would want that kind of information. That's awesome. So um, thank you for joining us, everyone. You are watching Muslims Collaborify on CanTV21 uh, and CanTV.org slash hotline. We're talking today about coming to our census and talking about the basics of the census, why, what, how, and when. Um, our guest is Walid Sankari, who serves as the Coalition Census Coordinator and has been working with our partners and with our communities to make sure that we're educated about the census. So I, um, I want to share with you a great video that the Census Bureau has put out. It's a PSA. I, I invite you to share it with your community. It, it, it covers all the important points that we just spoke about. So let's take a moment and watch the video. What is the 2020 Census? Every 10 years, the Census records everyone living in this country. 
It's written in the Constitution and comes in a questionnaire that counts everyone who lives at your address on April 1st. The data can be used to inform funding for services like fire stations, schools, clinics, and representation that affect your community. How will 2020 Census data be used? Where there are more people, there are more needs for public services. That's why the Census is used by the government to inform funding decisions each year. But that's not all. It's also used by nonprofits to inform services, by businesses to create jobs, and even by students for school projects. Understanding how the population changes helps us shape communities across the country for the better. How does the 2020 Census affect representation? There are 435 seats in the House of Representatives. These get distributed to the 50 states by population, and an accurate census response helps your state get the right amount of seats. States with smaller populations get at least one, while states with larger populations might get more. How do I take the 2020 census? In March 2020, every address in the country will receive an invitation to complete a simple questionnaire. And there are three ways to respond. Number one, do it online. Number two, call by phone. Number three, send it by mail. For those who don't respond, a census taker from your community will follow up and assist you. Is my 2020 census data safe? After sending your census response, your personal information is kept safe. By law, it can't be shared with any other government agency, law enforcement, or landlord. No one. So take your 2020 census with peace of mind. Shape your future. Start here. Visit 2020census.gov. Wow. That was great. So yeah, want to make sure... Wanna hey, make sure sweetie. What did you learn in school today? I learned that the 2020 census counts everyone in the all right, so want to just uh, so talking about um, the census for our communities and making sure that we're counted. What are some of the challenges that we face um, as a diverse community? Um, what are the things that you're finding uh, with the work that you're doing um, in terms of um, you know as you work with our communities? What are things that folks are afraid of, or what what are the challenges that we might face as we talk about taking the census and making sure that you complete it? Well, so a challenge in, in trying to count, for example, the Muslim community, but this is something true of Chicago in general, is the sheer human diversity, you know, uh, in terms of all kinds of demographics. Whether you're talking about uh, race, or you're talking about people's ages, or where they live, or how many people are living where, um, which, I mean, it kind of explains why Chicago could be at the bottom three of, of all metropolitan areas that responded to the census in 2010. Wow. Um, but that's what we're trying to change. I mean, if you look at a community, for example, like the Muslim community between, you know, Cook County and, and its surrounding counties, um, it's disproportionately younger, number one, um, on average than the rest of America. And young people are probably the hardest to count of all communities. It's... Um, very ethnically diverse, it's very linguistically diverse, um, and uh, frankly people are uh, rather suspicious of federal mm -hmm. data collection well, because right. community surveillance is a real thing and it's a real problem. Um, and it's hard to draw that idea that, that this machinery is, is, is separate and the mm -hmm. data will be kept separate right. and it's, it's uh, housed independently right and it requires a little bit of faith on the part of a lot of communities which um, have seen that faith falter right so and we so we've talked about the challenges we've talked about what how when um, how do we make sure that we take on the challenge as a community what are things that um, we're planning um, to make sure that we take on the challenge and we um, we rise to it Oh, we still got a few good months left, um, but okay. we do have a plan. The okay. good, the good news. I see it uh, up here. Yeah. Um, so it's two phases essentially. First phase is education, right? Uh, they say that the average person needs to hear something on three separate occasions before they really remember it. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to be everywhere, um, 
get the word out, reach as many people as we can, as many times as we can. There's no Great. redundancy when you're trying to preach about the census. Great. Um, and the second phase would then be getting people out there. Um, to actually do it, Yeah, right? to actually do it, to actually follow up with people, make sure, oh, yeah, they've responded. The, you don't want a census taker knocking on your door. Right. If Just you think it's annoying to fill out a nine-question survey, then imagine... Someone coming up to your door and asking right, you to that's, do it. That's a, that's a bigger headache. That's um, a bigger so headache. So you'll save Agreed. yourself a lot of time by just uh, getting it done before April 1st as Agreed. opposed to waiting afterwards. Um, and then I know that this is a great um, initiative uh, by the Illinois Muslim Civic Coalition about making the process relevant to the community that, that they serve. So um, on your screen you see something um, that is really great and unique talking about the different folks and the stories that uh, they relate to in terms of the census. Um, these are the census stories and the focus here is making sure that you put a face uh, and a name to someone you might recognize from your community or someone who looks familiar, maybe in a language that looks familiar. Um, we're looking at uh, some of the pledge cards as well as the census stories that have been developed uh, by the Illinois Muslim Civic Coalition. All these are available on our website, which is right down there, www.muslim ilmuslimciviccoalition.org. You're welcome to go check them out. Is there any particular story that uh, that you um, that you really relate to, or is there one particular one that that you can um, point out that you um, that you that really spoke to you? Oh, um, I like Amers um, because, frankly, I knew him. Oh, right? okay. Okay. So yeah, he was uh, one of my boys growing up, and then uh, to see his face on a flyer without him ever having mentioned it to me, of course, that's the first thing that's going to get my attention, right? Right. I'm like, oh wow, what's what's he doing on this thing? Yeah. So did uh, it make you more like, oh yeah, I would do that because I was doing it immediately. Okay. I I was curious as to Why what this flyer is. Yeah. 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 Um, because census, when you're talking about let's count 300 million people, and then run this data through a bunch of algorithms and, and then use it to create models to distribute funding. Right. Or, that's kind of abstract to a lot right. of people. For them, if you're trying to get an individual person to care enough to do something about it, right? Right, absolutely. Um, so you do need to humanize it. And every person has at least one reason why the census matters to them, whether you know it or not. Um, Right, and I think that's and that's what the education phase is all about, yeah. telling folks why the census is important. If you'd like a card um, for your community or for your organization or just for your family maybe, uh, make sure to check out the website. You can see on our screen we have um, editable cards where you can put a, pic a custom picture as well as a sample story and then share um, this great pledge uh, with your logo as well as your website on here so that folks that are actually filling it out can have that connection that Waleed spoke of. Um, and why pledge cards though? We've been talking about the importance of making sure that things happen and, um, and folks fill out the information, but um, why specifically pledge cards? Well, you know, when they say uh, you need to hear or read something three separate times before you remember it. They say writing something down is an even better way to remember awesome. it. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, and then when so you see that you've written it down before, yeah. I mean, they say that people are significantly statistically more likely uh, to respond to something if they've pledged to do it. And, you know, we're all about statistics when we're talking about the census. Absolutely. So we've been talking about um, the census and building civic power. Um, 2020 is an important, important year. We want to make sure that we are counted as a community and as a community we are making sure that we have access to all the wonderful things that, that we use as a community, whether it's hospitals, whether it's after school programs, as well as making sure that we're represented um, and we are counted in every which way and we're at the table when decisions are being made. Um, you've been speaking with us on Muslims Collaborify. We've been talking about the census and the importance of it. Um, we learned a little bit about why it's important to do the census, how, what, and what are some of the different things that we've been doing in our communities to make sure that folks are counted. Um,
As we come to the end of our um, program, I want to make sure that you know about some amazing events that are happening in our community. I wanted to share with you the American Medina exhibit, which is at the Chicago History Museum. It's a great talking about stories of Muslims in Chicago. It's a wonderful, um, a wonderful um, exhibit that you're welcome to visit. You can also um, talk about um, Iman is having a great dinner uh, coming up on December the 14th, which is on this Saturday. So please do check out the Iman website. That is www.imancentral.org uh, so that you can check out what they have going on. I wanted to thank you so much for joining us. My name is Rima Kamran. I'm with the Illinois Muslim Civic Coalition. My guest tonight has been Walid Sankari. It's We've been. Pleasure. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, we've been talking about the um, census and we've only scratched the surface. We want to make sure that you join us next time for our show um, on Monday at 7.30 p.m. Want to make sure that if you need any information or would like to join us on the show, check us out on our website, www.ilmuslimciviccoalition.org. And wanted to thank you for joining us tonight. Remember, to collaborate, amplify, and build civic power. Have a great evening. See you on Monday.